Hey there friends, Martin here. And as you may know, when it comes to environment plugins for Blender, one of my most recommended purchases ever is the Scatter add-on. I used it for many of my environment shots, especially for Heroes of Bronze. And so, to highlight it, I decided to put together this comprehensive introduction to this wonderful tool. As a matter of fact, the add-on, originally called just Scatter, was renamed to GeoScatter in the latest versions, implying that in its core, it now uses the super powerful geometry node systems. And so, this already awesome add-on became a real powerhouse. In the next few videos, I'll take you from the very basics of its usage to the more advanced and recently added features that it offers. First of all though, you have to purchase the add-on, and yes, it can get quite pricey, currently at $99 per individual license, which, if you ask me, is still pretty reasonable for what you get for your money. Nevertheless, if you just want to try a few functionalities, you can go for the special free version called Biome Scatter. I put a link into the video description, so this might be a great starting point for anyone doubting the product. There's even a free plant library asset pack to use with this free version, so you'll always have something to scatter. Anyway, in my case, I will be working with the paid version and the free plant library. So get the individual license, download all the files, and I highly suggest to dedicate some sort of special folder on your disk to this. And no, I don't mean desktop. And once you download everything, there will be this zip file with the add-on, then these scatpack files. I'll tell you what to do with them in a moment and also this plant library of free assets. Unzip this one into a special folder. After that, the installation itself is a bit more complicated than your average add-on. First, go to the preferences, load up the zip and activate it. So far so good. It's only when you enter this manager though, when things get more interesting. Here, you first land in this biomes tab where nothing is to be found. Uh, but no worries, we can just install our scatpack file with this file install a package here. Find your folder and first add these free plant assets and bam, immediately these jump into this biomes library and you'll be able to scatter these in a matter of seconds. Second, you can install these default scatter presets for more general scattering. I'll show you later. You can also go here to see what different scat packs are available for you. Especially these vegetation and botanic assets are amazing. So I highly recommend to buy those. And the links are of course in the description. But all of these are high quality assets. You can also dig deep into the preferences. And if at any time your add-on has trouble finding your downloaded scat pack asset libraries, just reload it here or specify the folder again. Before we get to the main scene, let me show you the very basics of this add-on on this simple scene here. So the very first thing we need is to define the object onto which we want to scatter stuff. Good. And one thing I usually like to do with these robust add-ons is to get a little overview. So pack all these here until you realize there are three main parts to this. Create, where you choose which assets to scatter and how then tweak, where you added the scattering afterwards, and some extra options. In this part, we will be focusing mainly on the first two. GeoScatter is a scattering tool first and foremost, so we'll let it do its job. You simply add a target, which we've already done, and then you select assets you want to scatter. I have some rocks prepared here. And if I now click here on the preset scatter, I have all these default scattering presets that we installed earlier. So let's choose one of them, let's say this one here. And just like that, your assets were scattered based on the preset pattern. By the way, the add-on very much depends on the scale of your target. That's why I always recommend to apply the scale on it so that the calculations are correct. And here you can then see this option gives us about 64,000 instances, which is kinda okay depending of course on the level of detail of your assets, but for these simple stones, it's good. If however, I scale up my ground plane, apply the scale and choose for example, this scattering preset, the estimated number is now much higher. 
Fortunately, the add-on gives you some options when the scattered assets jump over a certain manageable number. You can, for example, hide the scattered systems, show only a portion of them, or depending on the camera placed inside your scene, only show assets visible to that camera. So that's all certainly very handy. However, let's go to the previous size of our terrain, rescatter our rocks with the previous pattern, and then go down to this tweaking tab. The first thing you'll find is this system list, which shows you the various scattered groups. Basically, the geometry node setup that runs underneath everything, but we don't really need to dig into this. What's important is, every time we scatter a group, it is added here as a special item on the list. And to tweak it, all we need are these menus down here. Menus like distribution, where we can change the density of our assets, or there is the rotation, and of course, the scale. You can change the pattern of scattering, add culling masks, and more. All that we'll get into in a minute. All right, let me actually describe to you my regular workflow on this example from my historical project, Heroes of Bronze. So I have this wooden temple here that I made recently. And if you want to get the assets, I've actually shared my modular building blocks on my Patreon. So definitely go for it. It's available for all the Hoplite tier supporters. Then placed all over the scene, there are various assets I use on a regular basis. First, these polygonic trees from their botanic add-on. I really like these maritime pines, for example, or these ivy assets that I scattered all over the temple. Also, mega scans textures and rocks that I use fairly often. Next up, these mid-ground hills from the new bee production collection called Mountainscapes. In the very background there is this mountain that was generated in Gaia and I may do a tutorial on this a little later on my channel. And finally, the obligatory background image taken on one of my trips to the Mediterranean. I just slapped onto a plane like this with the collar also plugged to the emission socket. Of course, if you want to learn how to create all these from ground up, you can always go to my Master 3D Environments course over at CG Boost. All of my Envero knowledge is there, packed into this 14 hour course. So yeah, that's available. On top of that, I've added this big squashed sphere where I put this volumetric material to simulate the atmospheric haze. My usual approach to this is, I don't just set the density here, but also I add a tiny bit of emission, something like 0 0.0005. Also, instead of putting this volume onto a cube, I actually put it on this squashed sphere, so that it kind of fades nicely up here, and it also simulates the curvature of the Earth a little bit. This is what I usually start with. I fill my scene with all the elements I know I want to put on specific places. So the temple, the rocks and stones, trees, the hills and the background. And then I fill those empty spaces in between with scattered assets. Let's hide some of the collections that I don't need. So the midground, the background and the volume too. And we can even switch to shaded view for the scattering process. That way it will be much faster. So you know the drill, specify the target here, which is our landscape, and then go to the biome scatter and open up the presets that we got with the free plant library. And as you can see, there is so much to choose from. So let's start with, for example, this rock plane folder and this wonderful rock plane 04 preset. And after a bit of struggle, you can see that all the assets of the preset were placed, though with some warning, which in other words says that there's a lot of assets scattered on the ground here now. So what we can do about it is to close this create tab and go to this tweak one instead, where on the very first position, you'll find the system list of all the scattered assets grouped under this rock plane 04 folder. So let's hide it all and start going through it one by one. First, I will unhide this wild grass group. Have a look at it. And yes, these assets do look really great. Even though they are free, they pack a lot of quality. So let's start with this grass and try to scatter it a bit more efficiently for a shot. Oh, and by the way, I do have my camera already placed in the scene. 
And that will actually become very important very soon. First off, you can start by painting your weight maps manually, defining where you want your various assets to appear. Just go to the weight paint mode, you click this plus button and start painting with the draw tool. If you use Ctrl F, you can quickly control the amount of weight, so 1 is for full intensity and 0 for no intensity. Now whenever there is red, the most amount of assets will be placed, wherever there is blue, there will be no assets placed. I've already painted some weight maps here for assets I assumed I might have in the shot. So some vegetation, some gravel, even trees and bushes. Now let's go down here and in the culling masks menu, activate the vertex group with this checker and then choose our vegetation group from the menu. It's not really placed how I wanted it though, uh, so no problem, just hit this invert button and now it's fixed. Okay, this way, by not scattering your assets absolutely everywhere, the scene instantly becomes so much more manageable, especially if you do it for all these systems in the list. Which, by the way, is very easy to do. You can simply click on this gear icon, choosing this apply settings, and do it to all the other systems. We will probably choose other vertex groups for some of the other assets, but now we at least limited the number of scattering that we have when we unhide all these. But let's play with the grass a bit more. We can scale it up, for example, let's say to 1.2, and also increase the random scale to 0.8. In a pattern menu, this is where we control the pattern of the placement of this grass. So if we deactivate it, it becomes scattered pretty regularly, while with it active, it creates these islands of grass. This slider is what controls the placement of the grass patches, with 100% really eating out all these areas here. So let's lower it a bit, to something like 70%, filling more of this space. Finally, we can go to the visibility down here and hit one of my favorite geoscatter functionalities, this cam optimization, which, as you can see, immediately cuts off any grass that is outside the bounds of your camera view. Just for a bit, let me actually deactivate the pattern so that this is more visible. And yeah, this is very useful. Best thing, if you move the camera, it updates automatically. And you can even activate this distance culling, especially if you're looking from the ground level, you don't need as many assets in the distance. And as you can see now, all these assets start fading away behind the temple, which is an area we don't see anyway, so it would be wasted there. In fact, you can copy this functionality to all the other systems on the list as well. And that's usually the main things that I do in this tweaking menu. There is of course much more to do, sometimes I play with the rotation, and for my animations I activate the wind. And we haven't even mentioned the ecosystem, the proximity, and other advanced tools. But more on that in future videos. For now, let's start reactivating more of the systems that we have on the list. Let's say the rocks. Then the tiny rocks, the branches, and also the large branches. All this is now much more manageable and fast, even in the rendered mode, because of the optimizations that we did. I don't really think we need the moss, so let's get rid of it. And same goes for the gravel, I don't really like it too much. The wildflowers, I think they are really unnecessarily dense, so let's go to the density menu and lower it to something like 12, maybe. And we can also change the culling mask here to some of the other ones that I painted earlier, these flowers, uh, and they are now distributed further away from the path on the sides here. And I think we can also scale up the flowers to something like 1.2. Very cool, this is a lovely base. And now what I like to do at this stage, we can in fact go back to the biomes menu and add extra systems individually. So I feel I would really like some more greenish, lusher looking grass. No problem, just go to this wild grass folder and here let's pick for example this wild grass clump from the 01 preset. It gets added separately from our group, so you can immediately put it there through this menu here, and then again set up the culling masks. Uh, 
and the camera culling. With this, I think we can in fact paint a new weight map, because I want this grass to start a little bit further away from the path. So let's go to the shaded mode to make this faster, hide all these, and here duplicate the vegetation group. Name it, uh, let's say, lush grass. Set it up for the grass clump. And in the weight paint mode, get rid of these areas around the path here. To top it all off, we can also add these wonderful red poppy assets with some of the bushes too. Play around with these, and that's it. This is of course just a taste of what the Geoscatter can do. There are so many options of various biomes you can scatter, especially if you invest in the third-party add-ons. What used to take me hours can now be done in a matter of minutes, sometimes even seconds. And that becomes really important if you want to make your own big projects and films. So I hope I picked your interest and see you in the next part. But until then, stay creative my friends, Martin out.